Hey guys, Chris here, and I'm Ukrainian Canadian. Today is April 15th, 2024, and let's get to the news happening in Ukraine, shall we? Let's start with some good news, and today we have a confirmation from the Minister of Strategic Industries, Alexander Komishin, who confirmed that Ukraine will be able to extend the range of the famous Ukrainian Neptune missiles. I believe that originally these missiles had a range of about 200, 300 kilometers. Well, have, because Ukraine still has them. And now they will be able to extend the range of uh, these missiles to up to 1,000 kilometers. So this is excellent and increase its production tenfold. So this is really, really huge. And I hope it's true. I hope that Ukraine already has started the production of these missiles, it is extremely important. We have seen that the West is unwilling to provide the Ukrainians with these ultra long range missiles. Um, so Ukraine has no choice but to start building them domestically and produce them themselves. Because even when Ukraine will receive them, let's say the Taurus or some other Atacams variants uh, from the United States, there will be limitations being given. Uh, essentially, the United States or Germany might ask Ukraine to not utilize them against Russian targets in Russia, which is what we've seen with the Storm Shadows. Ukraine has only been utilizing them on Ukrainian territory. So this is very important because, of course, the Ukrainians have developed its own long-range drone program, which has been very effective at hitting uh, key Russian targets in Russia, to the point that now the United States is asking the Ukrainians to stop it. And I'll cover this a little bit later with more details. But... Um, now the Ukrainians hopefully will be able to produce these super ultra long range fast cruise missiles that will be much more difficult for the Russians to intercept in Russia and uh, this will make Ukrainian more, the Ukrainians more self-reliant which is also the goal right now as we've seen with the bill that's been uh, pretty much on pause for the last six months this crucial military assistance bill that the United States simply is unable to pass for various reasons, the Ukrainians have no choice but to start producing its own weapons as fast as possible. Time is really uh, of essence right now. So this is excellent news, honestly, and I really cannot wait to see them being used in action, hopefully against the Kerch Bridge and maybe other targets in Russia as well. Now, let's talk about a kind of a disappointing statement by Macron, the French president. And so he had a series of really big wins in the last few months, right? He had strong responses and actions. And it's very disappointing for me to see this kind of statement from him, which is very short-sighted. Essentially, he has proposed that for the Paris Olympics this summer, that it, there will be there should be ceasefire uh, in the world's major conflicts, including the war in Ukraine. Essentially, he has been proposing that during the Olympic Games, Russia and Ukraine conclude a ceasefire just because, you know, it would be very nice for the Olympics. And, you know, newsflash, President Macron, the world doesn't revolve around the Olympics. And so you're only opening the door for more Russian propaganda and misinformation. The Russians will jump on this ceasefire possibility. You know, of course, what do they have to lose? They're already occupying 18 to 20 percent of the Ukraine territory right now. So for them, it allows an opportunity to strengthen their positions to double down and continue bringing more and more weaponry. And at the same time, they'll be pointing fingers at the Ukrainians. Look, they don't want to uh, you know, sue for peace. They don't want a peace agreement. Look, they're a warmongering nation because, of course, the Ukrainians won't uh, want approve this. They don't want a ceasefire. They understand very well any option of ceasefire will only benefit the Russians. And how many times does the West really need to be fooled by Russia for them to finally understand that they never will play by the rules. Russia will always lie. Russia will always cheat and manipulate. Just as they've cheated during the Sochi Olympics. And the very fact that their athletes are able to participate in these Olympic Games is already a travesty in my opinion. Even though they cannot represent their home country, like under their flag, I still find it to be ridiculous that with this full-scale invasion, Belarus and Russia are able to participate in the Summer Olympic Games in Paris. But a uh, very disappointed statement. You guys can let me know what you think about his statements. But, you know, he had such strong wins and actions and only to just completely wipe it off with his statement to me is, is a little bit uh, disappointing, to say the least. Additionally, uh, we have more 
um, confirmations coming out from the Zelensky administration that indeed the U.S. had requested the Ukrainians to stop hitting Russian refineries. It has been confirmed by the Washington Post, and that seriously irritated Zelensky. And no wonder. Uh, essentially, uh, during the uh, the Munich Security Conference in February, the Vice President Kamala Harris met with Zelensky and asked him to refrain from striking Russian oil refineries. And uh, basically, the Washington confirmed this, warning in numerous conversations with the Ukrainian side, and also included Jake Sullivan, the U.S. National Security Advisor, who visited Kiev in March. And recently, it was Lloyd Austin, which said pretty much a similar, a similar statement. And so the U.S. officials say that supporting global energy markets to reduce inflation is a priority for the Biden administration ahead of the presidential election. So here you go. It wasn't about you know fear of escalation, it's just about the fear of a few more dollars uh, increase in your you know annual spending because of potentially seeing global energy markets uh, responding in a negative way following these strikes on Russian oil refineries. So we see that um, essentially the Ukrainians have hit a really weak spot, not only for the Russians but for the Americans. And truly, the U.S. leadership, as I've mentioned previously, has no moral right to tell the Ukrainians what they can or can't do, especially since they have not provided any meaningful uh, aid for Ukraine for half a year, only small breadcrumbs. So they're not in a position uh, to tell the Ukrainians what to do right now. With all due respect to my American viewers and audience, I think that what Ukraine is doing right now is uh, the correct thing. And let's... You know, let's not ignore the fact that how do you think the Russians are able to move within Ukraine? It's through these refined fuels, whether it be diesel or gasoline, and it absolutely has hurt the Russians. We have heard reports that Putin has met with Lukashenko and has had conversations with Kazakhstan uh, in case that uh, Russia is unable to produce uh, fuels for its internal market, that they will be able to rely on Kazakhstan and Belarus to be able to uh, to produce these refined fuels and uh, import them. So, you know, this has really hurt the Russians. And I think that the Ukrainians have found a weak spot and the very powerful instrument of geopolitical pressure. And the Ukrainians need to utilize it. Um, you know, at least in one sector where the Ukrainians have the upper hand, right? The long range drones have really paid huge dividends uh, to really hurt also the revenue of the Russian Federation because these oil refineries are damaged or completely destroyed and it will take a very long time for the Russians to be able to rebuild them or repair them. So, you know, the United States says it's not in their interest for Ukraine to be destroying these refineries. Well, for Ukraine, it's not in the interest for them to stop. So I know who I'm going with. It's with the Ukrainians, not the United States, who has not been providing the crucial assistance. And that leaves me with the video with um, foreign uh, minister, foreign affairs minister Kuleba, which said pretty much the same thing I've said in the previous slide. And I will share with you this video. Basically, I'll translate it because he's, talk he's talking in Ukrainian, uh, but there is kind of a mini translation at the bottom. But he essentially says that nobody in Ukraine will believe that one of the most powerful countries, military countries in the world, the United States, doesn't have an available battery to provide the Ukrainians with, the Patriot systems, with which they can save not only Ukrainian lives, but also super expensive infrastructure worth billions of dollars. And that's his question. So do you believe that the United States doesn't have a few Patriot systems to spare to the Ukrainian people right now to be able to defend them? And that also leads me to uh, what happened this weekend in Israel. So Iran, for the very first time in history, in modern history against Israel, launched a massive ballistic and kamikaze drone strike um, campaign on Saturday against Israel. I think it was close to 300 uh, ballistic missiles and kamikaze drones combined together that were launched from Iran and Yemen. And what happened? 99% of them were uh, intercepted thanks to not only Israel, but also the fact that the United States was present, Britain was present, French uh, jet fighters were present, 
Jordan opened its airspace. Saudi Arabia also permitted uh, jet fighters, American jet fighters to operate and various other jet fighters to operate in their airspace to uh, intercept these kamikaze drones and ballistic missiles. So my question is, why is there a double standard when it comes down to Israel, which is of course very important, uh, we're ready to do anything to protect them. But when it comes down to the Ukrainians who have been living through this hell for the last 26 months, it's too complicated. Okay, NATO, you don't want to be sending your jet fighters. You don't want to, you know, risk the fact that perhaps some of your jet fighters might be down. Okay, at least, at the very least, you can provide air defense systems, which are just sitting idle, not being utilized. The, Ukraine, the Ukrainians are willing to get the job done right now. They're willing to sacrifice their lives for the values that all of us believe in, which is the most important, is democracy and freedom. And right now we're letting the Ukrainians um, go. We're, we're completely, you know, withdrawing from aid to Ukraine. Like this policy makes absolutely no sense, especially from the Biden administration. And it's been very frustrating for me, honestly, to see uh, just the lack of understanding of what the Ukrainians are going through. And Kuleba really generates this um, this frustration don't be telling me that the united states doesn't even have 10 patriot air defense systems available it doesn't matter whether they're provided for free or by credits it doesn't matter the ukrainians have been just asking and begging for it it doesn't matter which way or form it's given to the ukrainians just provide them allow the ukrainians to survive have some breathing room they're literally fighting for their lives right now and let me continue uh with this video and so this is this part here where he says, we're giving you seven Patriot batteries tomorrow. So if the partners like the United States say, okay, so we're going to give you these, those seven Patriot batteries tomorrow, but we ask you not to do this and this and this, then there is something to talk about, right? There is some weight because they are pledging an assistance to Ukraine. Makes sense. But if you don't have these batteries or there is no help package and at the same time you're asked to not do something, what should we talk about? then everyone survives as best as they can. Basically meaning it's our interests that go first. And of course they should. Ukraine is literally fighting for its existence right now. It's fighting for the ability to exist as a sovereign nation. Because you know, guys, and I've said in the past, if Russia wins, manages to capture Ukraine, which I obviously don't believe it's going to happen, but even if they capture 20, 25%, already in these territories, the Russians have not been kind and generous to these Ukrainian populations. Torture, rape, murders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've seen the barbaric nature of the Russians. They will slaughter any anti-Putin, anti-Russian uh, citizens in Ukraine. So it's good to see that the Ukrainians uh, won't listen to these special requests uh, that are being given to them by you know its allies, whether it be the United States, France, Germany, et cetera, et cetera, until they will start actually helping Ukraine in a meaningful way. Again, I'm not saying that the partners, the Ukrainian allies have not been providing them help. They have, and it has been instrumental for Ukraine's ability to defend its territory. But we know that it's nearly not enough because the Ukrainians are not fighting Hamas. They're not fighting Hezbollah. They're fighting the second largest army in the world that has been brainwashed, that is ill in imperialism, and whose only goal right now is to conquer Ukraine at any cost. And we've seen how barbaric and how careless the Russians are. They don't care about their deaths. And Putin is exploiting that to the maximum. If it means another million Russians in Ukraine that will die, he'll do it. And he won't even hesitate a single second to sacrifice them. So unless, you know, NATO is expecting some Pearl Harbor scenario, on their territory, they should be providing everything they can to Ukraine right now. Because otherwise, it's going to be too late. So that's the video for today, guys. I really, really am grateful for your support of my channel. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe, like my videos, leave me a comment. And don't forget, if you have any, any additional funds, any spare change that you have, please donate it to the Ukrainians. Donate uh you know the the extra dollars that you have for the fundraisers for the fpv drones humanitarian aid the ukrainians absolutely need your help and a huge thank you to all of you uh for that support so that's it for today guys and i will see you guys in the next one slavo ukrainian